Using a sigma is a compact way to write a sum. For example, this thing here, uh, well, let's see, how is this read? It's read the sum of n from n equals 1 to n equals 500. Now, what you do to evaluate this is you plug in this number to whatever the expression is. That's the lower limit, 1. And then you evaluate the expression at the, that number. When n is 1, this thing is 1. So you just write 1. Plus, after doing that, you increment this by 1. And then you re-evaluate the expression at that number, and so on, and so on. So the next number is 2. And then you increment it again, and you get 3, 4, etc., etc. Where do you stop? You stop when n reaches this number here. So plus, we just write on and on and on up to 500. So this symbol here is a way, is a compact way to write this summation. Lower limit, upper limit, sigma, and the expression. Uh, I just have a couple more examples of this. Reading sigma notation is pretty easy uh, once you do a few of them. This example here, start off when n is 1, the value of the expression is 2 over 1. Then you add, increment n by 1, and you get 3 halves plus uh, 4 thirds plus you keep on going, 5 fourths, and then you stop when n is 5, 5 plus 1 is Six fifths. So compact way to write this. Same thing here. No big deal. Plug in the, the lower limit. Continue until you reach the, the upper limit. One plus one squared plus two plus two squared. The reason that I write it out like this is because sometimes it's easier to find patterns when you do it this way. And four plus four squared. Easier to see the patterns. Like so. But that's pretty easy. Reading a sigma is easy. Going the other way presents a couple of difficulties on occasion. For example, take this and say, take this sum and write it in sigma notation. You have to see what the pattern is in order to be able to write it. Uh, but you look at 1, 4, 9, 16, all the way up to 100. These are the squares. So to be an added, that's going to equal the sum of, uh, since every number is being squared, this is like 1 squared. 2 squared and 3 squared. See how I write it like that? It becomes a little bit easier to see. On and on and on. 10 squared. Well, what it's going to be is the sum of n squared, right? From n equals 1 to 10. 10, the mistake is usually uh, making the upper limit equal to the last number that is produced, but it's not correct. You have to make n. Um, you have to make the upper limit the last value of n that produces that last number. So n squared, 10 squared is 100, that's what that's going to give you. This thing here, uh, the sum of all the odd numbers from 1 through 99. You have to find out what the, the pattern is. All right, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Uh, it's the odd numbers. Now, if you just kind of look at it briefly, you can figure out that the pattern could be something like, well, it's a linear pattern. Because it goes up by 2 each time, which suggests that the expression is going to be a linear ex expression. You can make it 2n, say, minus 1. That's going to work. And now, what value of n is going to give you that, that first term? Well, if you plug in n equals 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 gives you that first term, so n, n is 1 is correct. What value of n is going to give you the last term? That's going to be 50. All right, 2 times 50 is 100, minus 1 is 99, so that's 50, that's that one. A total of 50 numbers are being added up there. It's going to be this pattern. Uh, for this thing here, same thing, you're adding up all the evens, this one's a little bit easier. So this is going to be the sum of, each of these things is like, right, 2 times 1, plus 2 times 2, and then 2 times 3, etc., all the way up to 2 times 25. So if you look at that pattern, each one has a 2. And you just get the regular counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 25, which is going to be 2n. From n equals 1, and the last place you stop is 25. That's all those. Uh, I've got a couple of slightly more d difficult examples. Uh, what do you do when you have something that's like this? You can write this in sigma notation. Um, if you notice that each one of these, uh, in each term, four terms, 
there, uh, there's x to some power and y to some power. So you would, it's going to be something like x to something and then y to something else. And if you look at the powers of y, uh, they go, this is like y to the 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. That would suggest that n equals 0 to 3 would be appropriate to write down. And that's going to work, right? y to the n. But if that's y to the n, what should the x's be? Well, the x's, they decrease 3, 2, 1, 0. So what should that be? That's going to be uh, 3 minus n. Right? So that way as n increases, this power goes down, this one goes up, and that's the way to finish it off. Lastly, what if the place that you stop at actually has an n in it? That's no big deal. This is pretty easy. All you need to do is switch up the um, index that you use. The pattern is easy enough. It's going to be something equals, it, it's going to start at 1, and it's going to end up at n. So we'll just, we can't use n in the expression because n is the, the, uh, the upper limit. So you just pick a different thing. k is usually the way it goes. So it's the sum uh, from k equals 1 to n of k. And if you try to write that out, you'll see it produces exactly that.